Hey guys, welcome to the car vlog. In this vlog, I think I'm going to do a quick roundup of what I think are the top three significant technologies that has come about in 2018 as it relates to software development in general. So there you go. So let me just find a good spot so I can get into the conversation. Now to be totally honest, this is not a list that I spent hours researching. I'm basically relying on my lizard nerd brain to give me the, uh, the info that I need. You know, I've been paying attention all year long. And uh, so, you know, your lizard nerd brain can calculate things at a hyper speed, uh, much faster than your cognitive mind. So we'll get to it as soon as I find a spot. Hey guys, so welcome to the video. So what are the top three significant technologies in 2018? I actually got a little list here. In no particular order, uh, number one, Flutter. Just yesterday, Flutter 1.0 was officially released by Google. And Flutter is significant in the mobile development space because according to the Flutter people and people who have done work with React Native, have said that Flutter development is far, far, far quicker in some situations. Apparently, it's not universally better than uh, other solutions, but apparently, it's super fast to develop with, like a fraction of the time. Now, just in case you don't know, Flutter is a framework that you use the Dart programming language. It's something developed by Google. It allows you to, to write one code base that will allow you to de deploy native apps to both iOS and Android devices. And they did some performance testings. I'll put a link below to a presentation Google put out. And it looks very impressive, at least superficially. And based on the comments of people who have developed with Flutter, it, they're really singing its praises. Now, the key thing about Flutter is that you write one code base and it doesn't run through some middleware interpreter. It actually generates source code. It actually generates um, native code. There we go. It generates native code, so it runs super quick, so you can access all the hardware accelerations and all the hardware of the device. And again, the big advantage is you got one code base that allows you to write for multiple devices. So I think Flutter, based on the initial reaction people are having, I think it may have some legs. It's a significant technology. I like that idea of writing one code base compiles down to native. So you get the advantage and the flexibility of a universal platform, but all the advantages of, of native uh, speed. So that's really, really cool. The second technology that I think is a very significant for 2018 is actually Kotlin. Kotlin was not invented in 2018, it was invented several years ago, but the significance, a few things happened this year that makes Kotlin my pick. Number one, Kotlin was accepted by Google. Google anointed it to uh, do for Android development. That's huge. Now, just in case you don't know, Kotlin is kind of this light, nimble language that um, that allows developers to uh, to write uh, Android apps and other Java apps very quickly. Kotlin is to Java as Swift is to Objective C. If you don't know, Swift is Apple's light, nimble language designed to replace Objective C because Objective C was hard to work with heavy duty, uh, a difficult language to write code in. So they wanted something quicker and easier. So to, to make it easier for develop to, to make it easier for developers to create iOS apps, um, Kotlin does this for Java. Now it was in the Android space. It's been accepted by Google in the Android space, meaning you can write your Android apps with Kotlin, but you could also use Kotlin to do server side Java programming. Now the other major thing that makes me pay attention to Kotlin is the fact that Oracle just recently said that in 2019 they're going to charge you to to have to run commercial Java code on the server at least. Now you could use an open version of Java, a free version, but if you want that official support from Oracle then you're going to have to pay to play to use Java. With Kotlin it bypasses that because when you write Kotlin code it compiles down to I believe the byte code and so you kind of bypass that whole thing. So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. So 
even though the Oracle crackdown or Oracle now starting to charge for Java in certain circumstances may not affect a lot of developers, because it it creates a stink, right? It creates a stink where people are like, wow, what are you doing Oracle? So it's going to make Kotlin even more attractive or give it another reason to be attractive because of that very reason. So that's something to consider as well. So uh, yeah, Kotlin in 2018. Finally, and this is a weird one. It's not a language, but I think that the recent Facebook backlash and the general social media backlash because of the perceived interference in the election and all that kind of stuff, whether or not you believe it or not, is, real, is irrelevant because you've also seen uh, uh, controversial people being deplatformed, whether it be off of Patreon or kicked off of YouTube. And whether you agree that is good or not is relevant. What's relevant is that now business owners are starting to see with firsthand examples, many examples where you could build up a group on Facebook, you could build up uh, a presence on Patreon, and at a whim, they could kick you off. So what you're going to see because of that is the rebirth and the reappreciation of having your own website. Something I've been preaching forever. You've got to have your own web presence because you can't count on you know, Zuckerberg on Facebook to, to uh, have your back. In fact, they won't if it suits their purposes. So what this means for developers is that the web space, not that it's gone anywhere, it's still huge. It's going to get huger. So there you go. These are the three things that I think that are uh, significant for 2018. Number one, Flutter. Number two, Kotlin. Number three, the rebirth of the website due to the uh, deplatforming of people multiple times, uh, whether it be on Facebook or Patreon or YouTube or whatnot. So to pay attention to. Those who follow my channel know that I am very much into the technology and the things as it relates to making the money, making the business. For me, I'm an entrepreneur first, software developer second. In fact, that's how my career evolved. I started first with a business that had nothing to do with tech, and I learned how to write code in the 90s to support my business. And to this day, even though I've written lots and lots of software over the years, I still consider myself somebody who thinks, I still consider myself entrepreneur first, technology, uh, specialist second. I'm not married to particular technologies. I just look at them as a tool, uh, a tool in my toolbox to leverage, to uh, to make, uh, to generate revenue, whether it be uh, working for somebody or freelancing or starting your own business, what have you. All right. I hope you found this vlog useful. Bye-bye.